welcome back. For this segment, we'll view a special interview with Brian Rauer, Executive Director of Better Business Bureau, serving New York, to discuss common scams and how to avoid them. Let's take a look. Achieving financial freedom and security can be a challenge for many Americans. As a result, some people turn to credit repair or debt relief services. However, trusting the wrong person with your sensitive financial information could lead to more problems and stress. Executive Director for the Better Business Bureau, serving Metropolitan New York, Brian Rauer, now joins me to discuss and share some helpful advice on avoiding untrustworthy businesses. Brian, thank you so much for joining me. Very welcome. Glad to be here. Now, can you just talk about, you know, why are credit repair and debt relief services such an easy area to scam others? And, you know, what makes these people struggling with debt relief um, or, you know, debt, struggling with debt in general more vulnerable to these types of scams? Well, I think you said it yourself. They're in a vulnerable position. Um, I think people who are already behind in their payments, who are facing um, could be loss of their home, loss of their car, loss of their financial freedom, they're already in a very susceptible state. Um, some of them can be desperate. Um, they could have a lien on their home, whatever the case may be. They're looking for any kind of a lifeline to get themselves out of this position. So the scammers are preying on the fact that these people could be in a desperate situation and they're, they want to trust, they want to believe that there's a quick fix. They want to believe their over promises and they want to believe that someone can help get them out of this very quickly. So that's the reason why when we see a lot of these reports to scam BBB scam tracker, things like that, a very high percentage of the people that are approached by this actually end up losing money to scams like this because they're so susceptible to this. Now, how do people know which credit repair companies to trust if they are in financial trouble trouble? You know, you, you can't always be 100% sure, but you want to at least go through the steps of, of checking legitimacy. So when you're looking at a company, you want to be very wary of someone that overpromises. So if they promise, for example, if it's a credit repair company, they say, I will guarantee you a 750 or an 800 credit score. I we guarantee it. Um, they have almost no information about you. They guarantee they will remove all negative marks on your credit rating, on your credit report. No one can promise that legitimately. No one can do that. No one can guarantee you an 800 rating. No one can promise that. They don't know your information. They don't know your specifics. They don't know your debts, and they guarantee that. It doesn't work that way. The credit reporting agencies, if the negative marks on your record are supposed to be there, if you really have missed those payments and they're completely accurate, they're staying on there for the requisite amount of time. Just because you challenge it doesn't immediately take them off and have them stay off. Um, there's no way they can know that if everything stays on, if you have legitimately poor credit and there's no mistakes, they can magically raise you to an 800 overnight. Doesn't work that way. Credit doesn't work that way. So every time you see an overpromise, that's a sure sign there's a problem. Another real concern is when they offer upfront, excuse me, they demand upfront fees. Um, FTC rule from many, many years ago, for these services, things like, you know, debt relief, debt settlement, they are not permitted to charge you upfront fees before they've actually done their jobs and done the work for you. So if they're ever asking you for an upfront fee before they've done anything for you, that's completely impermissible. That is a scam. That is a company that is unscrupulous. Do not work with that company. So there are a lot of signs like that. If they pressure you, high pressure sales tactics, they contact you out of the blue and you said, I need time to think about this. I want to research your company. Well, if it's an unscrupulous company, they don't want you to take the time to research them. So they're going to pressure you. Sign up now. This is a one-time offer. We're not going to talk to you tomorrow. That's another sure sign that this is a potential scam. So these are ways to really avoid. And by the way, there could be unscrupulous companies who maybe, maybe it's not a complete scam, but they, they bypass certain rules and regulations, and they're really complete scams, where all they want is your credit card information, your debit card information, your banking information, and you will never hear from them again. Complete and total scam companies. There's that group as well. And I should mention, there are, within this area, there are some legitimate companies that ethically treat their consumers, obviously. But unfortunately, it's also fought with a large percentage of companies that do skirt the rules and regulations and don't treat you ethically. So. And I think it's uh, really important that you mentioned that um, even if it, the company isn't a scam, maybe they just aren't the best company to right, interact exactly. with. Um, if they are, you know, taking these practices or, you know, using these tactics to get you to work with their business. Uh, so I think that is just as important as looking out for scams as well. Now, BBB accredited businesses have agreed to adhere to the BBB standards for trust. Um, and these are probably the, the businesses that are a little bit more trustworthy and that you'd want to work with. Can you just tell us, you know, what are some of the BBB standards for trust? You know, among the many standards, and I won't, I won't tell you about every aspect, we'll be here for several hours, um, I like talking about that, um, but the goal is, is trustworthy businesses, the words built into it. 
um, you're looking for businesses that are transparent, that are open with their consumers. So if they advertise a price, that's the real price. There's no hidden fees. Whatever fees there are, you must disclose those up front. You must deal with your customers on honestly, ethically. If you have contracts, abide by those contracts. You know, if you have promises or warranties, abide by those warranties. You know, every aspect of the sale for the product or service has to be transparent and open and conveyed to the consumer. No surprises. You can't have misleading advertising, promising, you know, bait and switch, one price and there's another price. Um, and when you're dealing with the consumers, if there's a problem, be available. Have easy contact information. They need to know where you are, how to deal with those, uh, with those problems, and then address your consumers promptly and address all their issues in good faith. You may not agree with them, but at least give them a place to complain. And, and if there is a refund due, provide that promised refund if that's the case. Convey all your policies. If you have a seven-day return policy, that can't be conveyed after the fact. It has to be up front. If it's no returns, tell them up front. You can't tell them after the fact. Um, you want to safeguard their information. So if you have to have a privacy and a security policy, and tell people, are you monetizing their information and selling it to third parties? So prepare, hold on to that information and make sure that they know what you're doing with it. Um, I would also say, if you're in an industry that requires licensure, we want to make sure that you're maintaining that licensure currently in any area that you're operating. If you're operating in New York City and Westchester and Long Island, and you need licensures, licenses for all three, make sure you have all those licenses in all those areas. So make sure you have your competency licenses. You know, overall, embodying integrity. We want to make sure that you're transparent, you treat your customers fairly, no surprises. There's a lot more information I could give you about that, but those are kind of the, the key areas that we look for. Now, what are some red flags people should look out for when seeking credit repair or debt relief services to ensure that they are not being scammed or just going to run into something that's going to cause even more stress? You know, you want to make sure that they're taking the time to get to know who you are as a consumer. So you want to make sure that they're extensively interviewing you, that you're telling them your entire situation. Uh, they want to make sure that they're telling you all your rights as a consumer. If they don't do that, then you have to wonder, why do they really want to work with me if they don't want to tell me what my rights are? So when you're checking out a company, and I would also, by the way, do a full background check on them. You can check them out with BBB.org. Um, that's BBB.org, um, not what I said. Um, and make sure that um, if there's any concerns that we've reported that you're noting those, um, just do a, a full background search on the company. Never give them your information up front until you're sure you know who you're dealing with, obviously. Um, make sure they're not charging you upfront fees. Ask for a schedule. What they often do is they stack fees. Um, so even if they're not charging you the upfront fee, which you're not allowed to do, they could ask you to put money into it, like an escrow-like account that could be used for a settlement, if that's the case. But in maintaining that account, they could add on fees to that account. So you want to make sure you know all the fees, if there's any hidden fees. Some of the unscrupulous companies, they hit consumers with so many stacked fees that you end up paying almost more than that than is being paid to your creditors. So think about that. You've paid what you think is $10,000 to your creditors. Maybe $8,000 of that could be fees that you paid to the company. So you're, you're treading water there. In fact, you could be underwater at that point. So make sure that you have a full schedule on the timeline. What products and services are they offering? Um, what's the timeline for resolving my issue? How are they going to do it? You know, who are they working with? You know, um, what, what's, you know, you have to have a full contract that explains exactly what they're going to be providing for you, and they have to take the time to go through that contract, explain what each of the sections mean. And if they don't, if they say, listen, don't worry, just go ahead and sign here, that's a real red flag to walk away. They, want, they should want their consumers to understand what they're signing, what services there are, um, how do I cancel it if I'm not comfortable with this process. But it has to be an open and transparent process with the consumer. All the fees must be disclosed up front. There can't be surprise fees at that point. Make sure that they're not billing you again up front before the services are done, before settlements have been achieved. And then again, make sure they're not over-promising things that they really aren't allowed to promise you, things that they could never know will be done until they've actually done the work. You say, well, we can get all your creditors to agree with, with us. No. Once you've done the work and you have three, you know, three areas of default, and those three creditors have agreed to do that, and they've started a payment plan, great. You've done the work. I made my first payment. Then you go to the next step, which is paying you know, their fee that's due, but yeah. only then. Now that leads to my next question, which is so important. And the BBB website says people should refrain from services that offer a debt relief plan <coughs> without education. And you said that you know whoever you're working with is going to want you to understand um, what's going on. So how does your company educate clients on maintaining financial health and avoiding potential credit relief or debt repair scams in the future? 
I think any good service is going to give you, and again, I'm not talking about us, but any, any business in this industry is going to want to accompany this with consumer education. If you've gotten yourself into this position beforehand, what's going to stop you from falling right back into those issues after the fact? So it's educating consumers on building a budget, on maintaining that budget, on you know, not overspending. You know, financial responsibility for the future, for the current and for the future. And if you don't combine that, you're going to have someone fall back into the same practices and the same problems and managing 20 different credit cards and maxing them all out. So it has to involve consumer education. And the more legitimate companies are going to combine that with consumer education. So they're getting you out of the problems you have now or helping you with those. And it's also helping you for the future. So we provide, I think, a great deal of information on you know, what to do, what not to do, you know, things to avoid, um, but we're just one resource. The FTC provides great information. You can contact the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. There are a lot of nonprofits out there that provide free services to consumers. So, you know, we're, uh, we'll be a conduit. If we can help to, to provide you with additional resources and, you know, steer you to other organizations and other groups and government agencies that may help you, we're happy to do that as well. Um, but the bottom line is that unless you combine consumer education and changing the way you go about your business, you're going to fall right back into the same traps. So if you've been in credit distress for 20 years and you spent two years getting out of that, what's to stop you from falling back into the same patterns that have happened? So it's got to be involved in consumer education as well. And I, I definitely think that's so important, and I definitely wanted to highlight that because financial literacy is so important. And, and I Absolutely. think yeah, any organization that is uh, claiming to help you without uh, getting to the root of maybe the problem um, isn't the organization that you want to work it's with. It's a band-aid. Right. It's not getting to the root of the problem. You're exactly right. Exactly. So yeah. I, I want to thank you so much for joining us and really educating our community about this and kind of telling them what resources they can use uh, to kind of help this situation. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. If you would like to learn more about the various scams that are out there and the steps you can take to help protect yourself, please go to the Better Business Bureau website at www.bbb.org. Once again, we'd like to give Brian a very special thank you for educating our community. We have to take a quick break. We'll be back with more Open after this.